In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to make a dry ice trap for bed bugs and the things that you need to know. Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about using dry ice to trap bed bugs and how to create a trap yourself. Uh, so what I have in front of me are the ingredients that you're going to need. Uh, we have a little half gallon uh, cooler. Uh, we have a dog bowl, which we'll talk about in a second. We have baby powder or talcum powder. And then we have cloth tape. And so let's start with the dog bowl. Um, all right, so. Go to your local pet store. Um, and what we have here is just a very basic plastic dog bowl. Now, what's important is, is you want to take the dog bowl and turn it upside down. What that's going to create is a platform to put your cooler on. As this releases carbon dioxide, which we'll talk about in a second, it will attract bed bugs to it. Now, what you need to be thinking about, though, is this area around here. And so what's going to happen is, is the bugs are going to come to it, they're going to walk up the outside, and they're going to fall in this trap well. Um, so you want a smooth plastic well here that the bugs are going to fall in and have a difficult time getting out. Now, in regards to preparing this for use, as you can see, the outside of this is very glossy and smooth. Bugs are going to have a very difficult time climbing that. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take fine grain sandpaper and sand down the polish on the outside of this dog bowl. If they can't walk up it, they can't get into it. Why I have this cloth tape is because you can actually use cloth tape to, and I don't need to take it off, I can't get it off. Oh, maybe we're gonna win here. No, we're not gonna win. And we lose. No, I got it. So, what you're gonna do is take the tape and go ahead and put it all the way around the perimeter of the dog bowl, going all the way down to the floor to the top. And what the bugs are gonna do is they're gonna use that to climb the outside of the bowl and fall into the trap well. So, platform, so dog bowl, upside down, platform to put the dry ice on, smooth plastic trap well, texture on the outside. What you then can do, and this is why we have the baby powder, is you can take baby powder and you can put it on a little cotton ball or whatever the case may be, and you want to sprinkle baby powder into that trap well. What that's going to do is make it really, really slick and the bugs are going to have a tough time getting out. Some dog bowls, you may not have to use this, but many of them, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And so again, just a little bit of baby powder in that trap well, and you want to get it just in the trap well. Don't get it on the outside, and you don't really want to have it on the platform. I guess the platform really wouldn't make a difference, but don't get it on the outside because that might make it too slippery for the bugs to get up. So again, this is just keeping the bugs in the trap well. So let's talk about dry ice. Anytime you're handling dry ice, take all the necessary precautions. Dry ice can be very dangerous. It's very, very cold. It can have, actually burn your hands uh, when handling it. So you want to use heavy-duty gloves. You're going to go to your local store that carries dry ice, and you're going to put as much dry ice as you can fit in this half-a-gallon cooler. Um, you're going to go ahead and fill it up with dry ice. You're going to screw the top on. And what I usually do is just open up the... Uh, nozzle on the actual cooler which will allow the the dry ice uh, the carbon dioxide to get out some people will just leave it a crack open you don't want to leave it completely open because what will happen is is the ice will just melt way too fast and so again nozzle open whatever the cooler type is you're using you can think of it you just want to leave it cracked open and so what's going to happen is when you put that dry ice in there as dry ice melts it actually gives off carbon dioxide which is what we exhale and the bugs are actually attracted to it and so they're actually going to come to the dry ice walk up and fall in. Uh, this is a really effective device. Now what I will tell you from a pest control company's perspective is you want to be very, very careful with this because obviously dry ice has a lot of risk associated with it. I would never set one of these in an occupied apartment. Um, I just can't secure it and I don't want people touching and accessing that dry ice. If you have a vacant unit though, it can be a great option to attract bed bugs. You know, I got a vacant unit that people think there are bed bugs there. There's nobody staying there. There's nothing getting the bugs moving. I might go ahead and set one of these for one or two or maybe even three nights in a row and try to get those bugs moving. Um, in regards to just one last safety concern associated with this, 
Obviously, CO2 or carbon dioxide can actually be used as a fumigant, which means that if the concentration of CO2 gets high enough, it actually can be deadly to organisms and humans. Now, in this situation, in a half gallon cooler, in a normal size room, in a normal situation, you shouldn't have to worry about the amount of CO2 that this is going to create and it having a, a toxic effect on humans. Now, obviously, when I say that, I'm assuming it's in a normal room with normal airflow and, and normal this, that, and the other. You know, a 10 by 10 room and, and whatnot. Now, if you took one of these and you got a real big cooler and you filled it up with dry ice and you were sleeping in the closet for some god unknown reason, that's a small enough room where if you put enough dry ice in it, it could become lethal to people. So again, you just want to be using a smaller half gallon cooler, setting it in a normal room. You're going to put it somewhere near the bed. Um, and again, just be responsible in regards to how to use this device. Um, and that's basically it. That's, that's using dry ice uh, to capture bed bugs. One last thing you can consider is that sometimes when you use this, the bugs are wandering around and they're responding to this CO2, but they're not committing to this trap. You can also take other types of monitors like the Volcano and whatnot and there's other ones out there and you can put them around the room in different places. So as the bugs are trying to find the carbon dioxide, if they come into contact with this monitor, they may walk, and fall, walk up and fall in. And so you can actually put monitors away from this but near it and that will also increase the chance you detect bugs if they're present. All right, if you have any questions on using dry ice to monitor for bed bugs, you can email me, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com, and I hope to see everybody soon enough.